There's not a single MBA program in the world that can teach you how to build Uber. Every MBA program in the world will teach you how to build a 20th century organization. When you look at the uh, classic organization, we have a whole section in the book called Death of the Linear Organization. Our organizations globally, government departments, corporations, etc., are typically derived from a military context. Top-down hierarchical command and control, uh, really good for scarcity, really good for uh, short-term aggressive thing, finding a market that doesn't change very much, and then doing uh, uh, products and services in that marketplace. Innovation almost always comes from inside and then you push it out. These organizations tend to be risk intolerant and very slow. And the whole org structure, KPIs, performance reviews, are designed to mistrust the employees. Right? So that's the context and framing for almost all of the organizational design coming from the um, uh, industrial revolution down to today. Okay. Um, and it actually resulted in a fellow called Ronald Coase positing an economic theory for this call, that's now called Coase's Law. He wrote a nine-page paper in the 1930s for which he won the Nobel Prize, basically saying that large organizations exist because the transaction costs inside a big organization are cheaper than the transaction costs outside. Therefore, it's more economically efficient to have big companies. And that, he, he, that kind of laid the economic thesis for why we have big corporations that got bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? Um, however, the challenge with big companies is you have uh, what Jeff Kowalski first told me. He was the CTO of Autodesk. He goes, oh, you were Yahoo. You had a big immune system problem. When you try anything disruptive in a legacy organization, the antibodies attack you. And you get one of these rationales for why things cannot change. Peter, yeah, you said I, I love these, right? You know, 50 reasons, some of my favorites, you know, it just can't be done. Yeah, or we don't have the money. Uh, nobody else has ever done it before. We, we've tried this 60 times. You know, it's beyond my responsibility, sorry, not my job. Yeah, it can't be done. Yeah. And I don't like it. Uh, it's not our problem to solve. Right, it needs a committee to study this and we'll get back to you. Yeah, and, and the competition's not gonna enjoy this. All of these kind of messages, and there's 50 of these, this was put together by Riaz uh, Shab, Ernst & Young. Uh, the, the thesis, and this is a big challenge, and you have big problems with immune systems in every big company in the world, and then it gets worse in government, right? Where the regulatory and the policy is the immune system. And then it gets worse in public sector where uh, uh, taxis are fighting Uber, bankers are fighting Bitcoin. And this problem is summarizing all of the resistance to change that we have around the world. Um, let's hear from Julie Hanna, who summarized this problem very well. The insight that EXO had, your thesis and insight about how companies try time and again to bring innovation in, but there's a, this immune system that attacks it. I mean, that was a revelation. It was a revelation on the level of innovator's dilemma to me. And because as soon as you identify it, you say, oh, that, that's that invisible hand that we just keep throwing good money after bad trying to address and we don't really know what's undermining it. Now, not only have you identified this, but you've developed this very systematic methodology that in, in an incredibly accelerated amount of time, starts to really transform the immune system problem and help an organization kind of unlock its superpowers, if you will, to go after the innovation it seeks. And so the, the way that you've done that is so concise and elegant and efficient that, you know, it's such an accelerator. It's, I think it's profound to me. I think it's profoundly important. There's not a system in the world, an organization in the world, that doesn't have this phenomenon and couldn't benefit from this methodology. So that, that's why I, I draw a lot of inspiration uh, from, from your work and, and your thesis. So, you know, if so if big organizations, which are basically the main modality by which we do business and commerce in the world today, and that's not going to work very well, how do we navigate this? And really, John Hagel and John C. Lee Brown summarized this. They said big companies are organized for two things. They're optimized for predictability and they're optimized for efficiency. 
right? If you're McDonald's, you're trying to deliver the exact same Big Mac in a million locations around the world using standardized supply chains and uh, a product strategy that's very linear. So all of our big organizations today are designed for linear, incremental, static environments that don't change very much. And that is not the world we're living in. And Peter just showed how radically the world is changing. And right? by the way, you know, this uh, immune system isn't just for thousand person organizations. I've run into immune systems in 10 and 50 and 100 person organizations. It's when you have been successful, uh, and you don't want to lose what has made you successful, but that's not going to take you to the next level, especially as things are changing so dramatically and rapidly. I have a great example here. Uh, Marriott Hotels today is worth about $50 billion. Okay? Turns out if Marriott had launched Airbnb TripAdvisor Booking.com, their market cap would be about $250 billion, about five times what it is today. The irony around that, and the reason we use that example, is all of those ideas were sitting inside Marriott but the immune system would not let it out, right? So for fear of cannibalizing the existing $50 billion market cap, they're leaving 200 billion on the table. And this is true for almost every big company in the world, the inability to deal with this. And maybe uh, um, uh, David Rose, who's the godfather of angel investing, uh, kind of said this, summarized this well. He said, any company designed for success in the 20th century is doomed to failure in the 21st, okay? Let's note, uh, that as we look at these new breed of exponential organizations, there's not a single MBA program in the world that can teach you how to build Uber. Every MBA program in the world will teach you how to build a 20th century organization, right? So there's a massive update that's needed across all of our education systems and teaching systems for how this works going forward.